Have you ever really needed to use a shot in an edit that you thought was just too shaky or blurry or need some fine tuning with its exposure? Or better yet, let's just say all of the above, right? Well, we've all been there. And thankfully, with the warp stabilizer VFX effect, the camera shake de-blur effect, and lumetri scopes, there are ways to fix footage that you thought might have been totally unusable. And that's what we're going to do in this video. Now, I was given this footage for a project, and it has to be used since the director liked the composition, and it's a key establishing shot, giving the viewers a great reference for time. Also, the crew didn't have a tripod, so unfortunately, this was shot handheld. So you can see, there's a fair amount of camera shake, and it appears to be a little overexposed. Now, all that being said, there's one thing to consider whenever you attempt to repair any footage there's always a recommended process. So when I see this footage, I'm thinking, first, let's fix the shake. Second, let's fix any potential artifacts. And then once it's nice, smooth, and clear as possible, then it's time to move on and finish with some color correction. So I'll press the space bar to stop playback here for a second, making sure layer one is active. I'm gonna go over to my effects and presets, and I'll start to stabilize this by using the warp stabilizer VFX effect. So in effects and presets, let's click once in the search field and type VFX. To apply the effect, simply click on it and drag and drop right into the composition panel and that effect will automatically be applied. As you can see, the effect is analyzing the footage in the background. And if you come over to the upper left corner in the effect controls panel, you'll get a status update as to how fast the analysis is happening, how many frames have actually been analyzed, and every once in a while, it'll give you a time reference as to how long it might take before it's finished analyzing the footage. Once it's finished processing, change the result dropdown menu to no motion since it was a lockdown shot. And notice, it doesn't have to reanalyze the footage. It just stabilizes with the new settings. Now let's go back down to the timeline and click once to make sure it's active and press the spacebar again to begin playback. And let's look at the results of our stabilization. As you can see, it looks exponentially more stable. In order to see more detail in the image, press the spacebar to stop playback. And let's change the magnification to 200%. Press and hold the spacebar as you drag the image to better view the clock. Now, let's click in the top part of the timeline to scrub the playhead to see if we can see any blurry frames. I'll stop on 13, 24, 51, 05, and you'll see we have a blurry frame. So I'm going to press Shift 1 to add a marker into the top of the timeline. I'm just marking this as blurry footage for this one frame. I'm going to go ahead and move down the timeline here and see if there's another frame. Yep. I see another one right here at 13, 24, 51, 18. I'll press Shift 2. And what you want to do is just kind of move through the footage and identify some of the different frames that are a little blurry. So here I found another at 13, 24, 52, 07. So I'll say Shift 3. Now I find marking at least three different frames a good reference for what we're going to do next. Because in the past, once you stabilize this, if you had this blurry shot, it would be problematic. But there's a wonderful effect that you can use to fix this. So if I go back over into my effects and presets, I'm going to type D-E-B-L-U-R for de-blur. And it's the camera shake de-blur effect. So I'll click on that, drag and drop it right onto my composition. And what it's going to do is look at the clip and it will analyze the frames forward and backward in relation to where the current time indicator is. So right now it's looking at five frames and it's blending all those frames, the sharp frames on either side over top of the blurry frame. And since I added these markers with one, two, and three, all I have to do is press two on the keyboard to move to the second marker. And it'll take a second here and you notice now this is nice and sharp. Now, if you wanna double check the results of what you've done, you can toggle the visibility of the effect here in the Effect Controls panel. You can also press 1, 2, or 3 on your keyboard to move to the different markers. Continue to toggle the effect on and off to view the results. It's important to note that you can increase the strength, but I want to give you this one tip. Instead of increasing the strength to a value over 100%, sometimes the de-blur effect works a little better if you just duplicate the effect in the Effect Controls panel. 
just select it and press Command or Control D to duplicate. That'll work a little bit better than just trying to do it all at once with one camera shake de-blur effect. Now with the effect applied, press 2 to make sure we're all looking at the same frame, and we're ready to move on to fix the overexposure of this shot. What I'd like to do is go up under the Window menu and change my workspace to the Color workspace, because in here, I can access the Lumetri scopes. And notice now things are optimized a little bit more so I can actually see more of my footage and focus on what scopes I'm going to work with. Just so I can see the entire shot, I'm going to change the magnification of this clip to fit. And if you come down to the lower right corner of this panel, there is a wrench icon that you can use to access some of the different presets. And I'll use the preset Vector Scope YUV Parade RGB and Waveform YC. So when I click on that, I'm going to get three different scopes. This first scope here allows me to look at the saturation and the color values of the shot itself. So you can see I've got this area here. This is called trace. And this is the video values of what's in this shot. And the colors are leaning towards yellow. This first area here is yellow. This next one is red. We have magenta, we have blue, cyan, and green. And in general, you would like to have the trace inside of this shape in order for things to be nice and safe. Here, I'm going to hover over the right side of these scopes and make it a little bit larger. And let's look at the Parade RGB. This is the brightness value of the luminance within the red channel, the green channel, and the blue channel. And brightness goes from 0 to 100%. And then over here, this is the saturation of the color from 0 to 255. Now this one down at the bottom is the Waveform YC scope. And what this is, is it's showing me the brightness of the image and the saturation all together at once. So if you notice here on the left-hand side, the brightness is also known as luminance. So here it goes from 0 to 100. And on the right side, this is the saturation from 16 to 235. Now, these settings will change a little bit depending upon what you choose in this pull down here in the lower right. I can be in 8-bit space, float space, or HDR. Since I'm working in HD footage, I'm going to go ahead and leave this in 8-bit space. And there's one other thing I can do. If I come back to that wrench and click one more time, down here there's an option for color space. Since I'm in HD, I want to make sure that I'm in Rec. 709 color space. These scopes are important because as I make adjustments to the color correction, I want to see exactly what the video values are going to be for the signal coming out of this clip. Because each person's computer monitor might have a slightly different color setting. So this way I can actually see what the colors are going to be here in the vector scope, or I can come down here in my waveform monitor with the brightness and saturation. So let's get started with some color correction. I'm going to go here to my effects and presets and I'll search for Lumetri. L-U-M-E-T. There it is, Lumetri color. And I'll just click on it, drag it and drop it. And now in the color panel, I'll go to my basic correction. It's always a good idea to start with a basic correction and fix your exposure first. So here, I'm going to look at my exposure and I mentioned earlier it was overexposed. So I'm going to bring that down just by clicking and dragging. And notice as I'm moving down, the values in the scopes are moving. So I want to move the brightness down a little bit. So I'll bring that down minus 0.4. It's a minor adjustment. Now, the contrast is a little flat. So I'm going to go ahead and increase the contrast. And notice what happens when you increase contrast. The brightness in the top of the image and the bottom of the image will move apart. So this is increasing the difference between the dark part of the image and the lighter part of the image. Now, over here in the RGB parade, I didn't really talk about this too much, but what this is doing is it's giving me the overall balance of the image. And you can see, since I've got a lot of blue sky here, blue is the most saturated or the largest range of values I have in this image. So if I want to adjust that, I can go back over here to the tint section. And if I click and drag, let's say to the left, notice I'm increasing the green value. 
If I go back the other way, I'm increasing red and blue. You can also adjust the temperature in a similar fashion. So here, if I bring the temperature over to the right a little bit, I'm bringing the blue down and I'm integrating a little more red into the shot. Now I'm looking at the bottom of the image and you notice here that none of these pixels are really truly dark. A value of zero would be 100% black and I would like this to be a little darker. So I'm gonna go down here to the black levels and I'll click and drag to the left on the number value to bring the black values down. And you wanna be careful, notice here in the lower right corner, as I make this adjustment, I don't wanna push it too far because if I go beyond it, notice it sort of flattens out. This is called clipping or crushing your black levels. And I don't wanna do that. I just want it to barely kind of touch. Okay, so if I toggle my color adjustment off, and on, you can see I've got a lot more contrast and I have a little bit more definition in the clouds. But I can add yet a little more definition by bringing the brightness of the clouds down a little bit. So here, I'm going to go to my white levels and I'll bring those down just a bit. And I'm looking around this 213 value. I just want it to be a little lower than that or let's say 90% brightness. I'll bring it down to say 85%. That's fine. And then here in the highlights section, I'll increase my highlights. And notice that flattens out the clouds. If I decrease the highlights, notice I'm getting a lot more definition in the clouds. So I'm just adding a little space between the top part of my pixels and then some of the other not quite as bright sections of pixels. So now if we toggle this off and on, you can see not only do I have a little bit more contrast, but I definitely have more definition in the clouds. Now, since I've done this, my overall signal is a little dark. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring the exposure back up. And notice exposure is very sensitive. When I bring the exposure back up, now things are a little bit brighter overall. Now, once you actually have the brightness and everything adjusted in your image using the basic settings, you can go on under the creative section and apply more adjustments. Honestly, what I usually do is get my main adjustments set up in the basic settings. And then when I go to creative, I'll go to the look section if I want to apply a specific style. So if I click on this drop down menu, let's say I want to make this look a little more like a vintage faded 70s look. I can choose this Fuji Eterna 250D Kodak setting. And when I do that, now notice it has a little bit more of a vintage feel. The black levels aren't truly black. And if I really wanna fade this a little bit more, I can come down to the bottom of my Lumetri color settings. And here under vignette, I could actually add a vignette. So here I'll add a vignette. If I drag it to the left, it makes the edges darker. If I drag it to the right, it sort of washes out the edges a little bit. So here I'll drag it back to the left. There we go. And so, if I just want to see this one creative adjustment, I could toggle it off and on. And I actually kind of like it on. It's added a nice gold highlight in the trees and I have a nice vignette around the edges. So remember, whenever you need to make adjustments or fix any unusable footage, the key thing to remember is the process. You want to stabilize the footage first, then fix the artifacts, then go ahead and make your color adjustments. And while you're making your color adjustments, go ahead and use the color workspace. That way you can reference the Lumetri scopes so you can see the true output signal of your video as you make your changes.